Thanks. Okay, let me get started. Thank you for including our paper in this program and thank you for coming to this presentation. Uh, in this paper, we study technology decoupling uh, between the United States and China. And this is a joint work with Wei and Amri and Dan Qing at CKGSB. Okay, in recent decades, China has emerged as a global technology power. In this figure, let's look at the reigning power, the United States, and the rising power, China, in the 21st century. And this blue line is the R&D share of China uh, in the world. And this red line is the global R&D share of the United States. Uh, as you can tell, at the beginning of the 21st century, China accounted for less than 5% of global R&D. That's peanuts. But as a comparison, the United States is, was dominating around that time. The United States accounted for more than one third of global R&D at the beginning of the 21st century. But in the past two decades, China's R&D expenditures have increased by more than 20 times is growing way faster than the United States. As a consequence, the U.S. share of global R&D has declined to about 25% in recent years, and China's share has surged to a whopping 23%. So in recent years, both countries account for about a quarter of global R&D. In 2010, China became the largest manufacturing nation in the world. And this position used to be held by the United States for 110 years. In 2013, China became the largest country uh, in terms of the trade, and, and, and I mean, in terms of trade in goods instead of services. And in 2014, China became the largest economy by PPP terms. And eventually in 2019, China filed the largest number of international patent applications as the World Intellectual Property Organization. So in recent decades, China has made significant technological progress. Now it's benefiting from the integration with the developed economies, especially the United States. For a long time, the technological trajectories in both countries have been closely aligned with each other. But recently, things have started to change. Uh, increasingly, there is, a mis, uh, there is a mutual distrust in both countries. Uh, in addition, it's leading to real actions to unwind the current level of technological interdependence uh, between these two countries. So increasingly, it seems that we are moving toward two technological systems uh, with an increasing degree of separation. And this process is, rec is recognized as uh, decoupling, or technology decoupling, more specifically speaking, uh, in our research context. So decoupling has triggered a lot of debates. And there's a lot of sharp disagreement because there's a paucity of solid empirical evidence uh, on this subject. So to fill this gap, we create a measure to gauge the degree of technology decoupling between the United States and China. Uh, we also create a measure of the technological dependence of China uh, on the United States. Well, to clarify, in our paper, decoupling and dependence are totally different notions. Uh, in our paper, decoupling is about different technology standards because technology standards can be different across countries. So technologies in different countries can be incompatible with each other. Uh, for example, think about the COVID-19 vaccines. I mean, the, the US vaccines is based on uh, the MRA te technology, but the Chinese vaccines uh, are based on the activated virus. Uh, these are totally different uh, scientific approaches. Uh, they're gonna lead to two different technological paradigms uh, in China versus the United States. Uh, as a simpler example, let's just consider the standard voltage in power transmission. I mean, in China, the standard voltage is just 220 volts, but in the United States, uh, the standard voltage is 120 volts. So these are different technology standards. This is what we mean by technology decoupling. Uh, this is like just driving on the left or on the right. I mean, in our paper, uh, the notion of decoupling is about you drive on the left, but I drive on the right. In contrast, the notion of integration is about we both drive on the right, where we both drive on the left. Because this is about different technology standards. Uh, this has nothing to do with the country's technological capability. In contrast, where dependence matter is designed to capture a country's technological capability relative to other countries. I mean, a decreasing technological capability in a country indicates a weaker compa national competitive position in the global ec uh, innovation ecosystem, and it implies a higher level of dependence on foreign technologies. So in our paper, decoupling and dependence are totally different notions. We're gonna create two orthogonal measures that are unrelated with each other, uh, one to capture decoupling and another one to capture dependence. Okay, based on these measures, we're gonna look at how technology decoupling between the United States and China 
affects home performance for both the Chinese firms and the US firms. We're going to evaluate how the, the public policies of both countries affect technology decoupling, and we also assess their subsequent impact on foreign performance. On the Chinese side, we focus on China's industrial policies to promote its strategic emerging industries. Uh, on the US side, uh, we focus on the US sanctions imposed against China. It's sort of like the suicidal policy exercises uh, that Mike just envisioned. Okay, let me start from the data. Uh, so in this paper, we combine the patent data from the patent offices in the United States and China. The patent examination process is largely comparable in both countries. And in particular, in both countries, it is required to cite the prior art in both domestic patents and foreign patents, as Ernest just demonstrated in his study, uh, I mean, the drone work with Song. And so the US patents and Chinese patents do cite each other. We exploit such cross-country citations to create a measure of technology decoupling between the two technological systems. To illustrate how we construct this measure of technology decoupling, we can look at this diagram. In this diagram, both axes are the propensity of patent citations. It's the propensity for a domestic patent to cite a foreign patent relative to citing a domestic patent. This vertical axis, PCU, is the propensity for a Chinese patent to cite US patent relative to citing a domestic Chinese patent. This horizontal axis, PUC, is the propensity for a US patent to cite a Chinese patent relative to citing a domestic US patent. At this origin, OO, people never cite each other. So we define this case as the complete decoupling case. At this point, one, one, in both countries, domestic patents are citing foreign patents, just like citing their domestic peer. So we define this case as complete integration. To assess how the two countries depend on each other, we start from the 45 degree line. Because along the 45 degree line, PCU is always equal to POC, right? So there's always mutual and equal dependence between these two countries. But still, the level of decoupling is totally different, ranging from complete decoupling here all the way to complete integration here. In light of this, intuitively speaking, this vector QI captures the degree of technology decoupling between these two countries. When we deviate from this 45 degree line, the relationship between these two countries becomes asymmetric in the sense that one country depends more uh, on the other. Uh, so above the 45 degree lines, PCU is greater than POC. So relatively speaking, China depends more on the United States uh, than the other way around. So we call this region above the 45 degree line, the US leading region. Analogously, the region below the 45 degree line is defined as the China leading region. Uh, in many technological cases, the US do depend more on China than the other way around. We're gonna see that very quickly. So when we deviate this for, from the 45 degree line, uh, this vector PQ, I mean, for every point in this diagram, like this point P, we can project it to the 45 degree line. So that this vector Q, QI captures the degree of technology decoupling between these two countries, and this vector PQ captures China's technological dependence on the United States, because the more we deviate from this 45 degree line, the more China depends on the United States. And this is the intuition for how we construct or manner of uh, technology decoupling and or manner of technology dependence. They are constructed to be orthogonal to each other, okay? And to be specific, this is how we spe uh, how exactly specify or matter of decoupling. And this is a symmetric matter. Uh, it's symmetric across PUC and PCU. And again, it corresponds, intuitively speaking, it corresponds to this vector QI in this diagram. This is a symmetric matter and it's bounded between zero and one. So zero corresponds to this point of complete integration, this point one, one here. And one, I mean, when this decoupling matter takes a value of one, it implies that we are here at the origin. So people never cite each other. Analogously, this is how we exactly construct. Please. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. What are, you are you are you are going. Uh, that's the next step we're going to approach. You are talking about the economic interpretations of these matters. Was the do they actually capture in terms of the economic decision makings? And here, the, up to this point, this is a, just about statistical definitions, and this is what we define as decoupling. And this is what we define as dependence. They are driven by different things. For example, by policies, as you have pointed out. And the US policies and Chinese, uh, Chinese policies uh, can have totally different motives. And in addition, this can be driven by demand, uh, like international trade or foreign direct, uh, foreign direct investment. And this can be driven by supply of the talents, like the talents falls, the scientists uh, coming abroad for, to study and then coming back and returning to their home countries. Uh, all of this could affect the matter of decoupling and dependence. And so our first step is to statistically speaking, define what we mean by decoupling. This is a symmetric matter. And what we mean by dependence, this is an asymmetric matter. And in the next step, we're gonna characterize the stylus fact about these matters. And based on the stylus fact, we can discuss the economic uh, interpretations. And exactly as you have envisioned uh, in the policy analysis, we're gonna see exactly different or opposite motives of the US policies against Chinese, Chinese policies. Is that clear? Okay, thanks. So let me continue. Uh, again, this is how we specifically construct our matter for dependence. This is an asymmetric matter. And so again, intuitively speaking, it corresponds to this vector PQ here. So when this matter is positive, we're in this US leading region. So China depends more on the United States than the other way around. When this matter is negative, we're in this China leading region. And so as a sanity check, we can look at the top 10 US leading technology classes uh, in this diagram. We're sorted by three digit IPC in this table. So it goes all the way from information storage to basic electronic circuitry and to weapons. China did depend a lot on the United States in terms of weapon technologies. And in contrast, this is the top 10 China leading technology classes. So to clarify, the technological dependence matter is always negative in this table. So for all these technological classes, the United States depends more on China uh, than the other way around. Uh, for example, in C14, skin, heights, pelts, or leather, uh, the United States depend a lot on China. Think about the, uh, the shoemakers in Venge of their dominating the shoemaking industry in the whole world. And we have the metallurgy of iron in the second place, and it goes all the way to sugar industry. And analogously, this is the top 10 most decoupled technology classes. We have building here and the agriculture, construction, and it goes all the way to check-in devices uh, because in the United States, uh, the payment structure, uh, the payment system primarily relies on card payment technologies. But in China, now most of the retail payments are done by mobile phones now. So uh, these, uh, I mean, it seems that uh, or matter or decoupling and dependence makes some sense. Uh, this is the first sanity check that we have done. Okay, now as the second sanity check, let's look at the economic journals. The, uh, because as economists, we're more familiar with economic journals than technologies. In this diagram, we look at three journals, AER, JF, I mean, Journal of Finance, and JBF, Journal of Banking and Finance. This is a first tier finance journal. This is a second tier finance journal. This horizontal axis is our matter for decoupling, and this vertical axis is our matter for dependence. And these circles are about JBF versus JF. These, uh, I mean, these squares are about JBF versus AER, and these triangles characterize the relationship between JF and AER. We can compare these circles with the squares here. So JF is here, AER is here. So as you can tell, compared to, J, uh, compared to AER, JBF is more, way more integrated with JF. Uh, so the finance journals are more integrated with each other. They are applying with a similar concept and similar uh, methodologies in their study. And, but there's a major difference between JBF and JF. JBF is here, JF is here. So compared to JBF, JF depends uh, less on the AER. So this is reflecting the strength difference between first tier finance journal and a second tier finance journal. Uh, so this is uh, consistent with, with what we know about these journals. So uh, to, in that sense, this is a vote of confidence that this matter seems to make sense. Okay, now let's look at the real data. I mean, now let's put the real 
data points into this def, uh, definition diagram. Again, this vertical axis piece you use is the propensity for the Chinese patent to cite US patent. And this horizontal axis POC is the propensity for US patent to cite Chinese patents. We highlight three critical points in this figure. 2000, one year before China joined the WTO. 2009, the end of the Great Recession and 2019. That's the last year in our sample. Overall, we see two patterns. First, uh, generally speaking, we are moving from the origin to the point one one. So the theme between the two countries is about technological integration, uh, at least so after China has joined WTO. But after China has joined WTO, it has first moved away from the 45 degree line. So China has increased its technological dependence on the United States after joining WTO. But after the end of the Great Recession, China is now moving back toward the 45 degree line. So after the, great, the end of the Great Recession, China has decreased its technological dependence on the United States. So to see this more clearly, this is the entire time series uh, for our decoupling matter and dependence matter. This blue line is the time series for the decoupling matter, and this red line is the time series for the uh, uh, for matter of dependence. I mean, China's technological dependence on the United States. As we can see here, this blue line keeps decreasing over time. So the theme between these two countries after China has joined WTO is about technological integration. Uh, that's the opposite of decoupling, at least in the aggregate data. Uh, but when you look at this red line, it's hump-shaped over time. So the nature of dependence, uh, the nature of this decoupling process has changed. Uh, before the end of the Great Recession, this is about dependence deepening integration. But after the Great Recession, this is about dependence declining integration uh, from China's point of view. As another sanity check, we also computed this decoupling matter between US and China and US and EU. In this diagram on the left panel, this blue line is the US-China decoupling matter, and this red line is the US-EU decoupling matter. As you can tell, compared to China, the US is way more integrated with EU. On the red panel, we plot these two time series on separate axes so that we can 